Howdy, I'm John Holmes and today we are going to do a review of the Axial SCX-10 II. It is a brand new vehicle that Axial just released just a short while ago, I think about two weeks, and it's already on shelves and available for purchase. So we're going to run down our first impressions of the rig and let y'all know what we think of it. So first off, I'd like to say that it's really impressive engineering by Axial. It's essentially a whole new vehicle with a few parts that are changeovers with the SCX-10 for compatibility issues, but they went really far with their engineering on this, put a lot of little scale details into everything and just did a great job in my opinion. And it's all new, but it's really not too crazy. It has compatibility with the SCX-10 inner shafts, which really helps out. And more or less, it's the same sort of rig. It has the same rails as the SCX-10 II, and there'll be a lot of parts compatibility back and forth. So it's new, but it's not too crazy that we'll have parts issues in the future, in my opinion, at least. Now, what is new compared to the SCX-10? You can see right off the bat that the axles are completely different. They really went far on their design for a scale axle, shrank down everything to give you a lot more clearance underneath, which will be very welcomed. And they also decided to go with a taller tire for this particular kit than usually came with the SCX-10. That's going to be good for just wheeling around and having better ground clearance, more of a modified wheeler than a stock one. So they reduced the size of the ring and pinion to give us more room underneath. They also went with M4 threaded links, much thicker threaded links than previous models came with. That'll be a very nice addition. And then they also upgraded everything in the transmission and axles to be full steel, machine steel in the gears and cast steel where possible. And uh, yeah, just, just really, really did a lot of good tweaks to it. Now we can also look and see that the transmission is now new on the vehicle as well. So you can see that it is more of a transfer case style as opposed to the old SCX-10 which puts the motor right there, basically an old transmission like on the uh, associated buggies and the uh, driveline's coming right off there. On their new vehicle, they did a transfer case setup, which put the drive lines in more of the center of the rig, actually right in the center of the rig, and then a transmission that comes off of here, and then spur and pinion reduction on that side. Now, the new transmission is certainly larger, but it does have room for a two-speed inside, which is pretty cool of them to do that. Now, what's the big deal about these guys? The first thing that I really like is that they made the inner axles compatible with the original SEX-10. There's a lot of companies that produce axles and axle shafts, universal CVDs, whatever you want to call them. There's a lot of people that produce those products for the SEX-10. And so keeping that standard was a good call, in my opinion. Now, uh, let's see if I can get this to sit. I'll just put it over here. We don't care about that rig anymore. <laughs> um, another thing that they did was that they made it cross compatible with the skid plate for the SCX-10 so that if you do want their old transmission style, you can swap it out fairly easy. They actually supply another skid plate with the kit. So that's, that's pretty cool there. Uh, they also developed a high pinion axle. So as you can see on this axle, the pinion does not come in on the center line, but it is actually raised up above, which gives you more ground clearance. And you might be able to tell looking at this, but the axle shaft itself is higher than the actual links. If they had done an on-center pinion, it would have been able to catch up on stuff. Uh, really a good choice in, in that uh, high pinion design there. The other things that I really like about the SCX-10 II, they went into the extra scale detail on the realism. The tires are fairly scale looking. The axles themselves are much more scale looking than previous ones. And they also went with a licensed Jeep body, a, a 2000 Cherokee, if I recall correctly. This actually isn't my vehicle. I'm borrowing it for this purpose. Uh, so they, they really did a good job of stepping it up to the scale market that we have today. Now, the pros of this vehicle that I can tell so far include that high pinion, give you a lot of extra clearance when you're going over objects. They also increased their gear ratio on the axle to 3.75 to 1. Now that is good because it reduced the, the chance of torque twist. The faster that you can get 
the axle shaft spinning, the better. The more ratio, the more gear down that you can get in the axle, the better, as far as torque twist is concerned. So that was a good move there. The beefy links again, that is another pro. Went with a larger link that is M4 threaded instead of the typical M3 threaded that the industry standard is pretty much settled on. So it'll be much stronger. We'll have much less chance of ripping links out. Their new ball ends are also beefier as well. Uh, so they just went all the way around and beefed up everything that they could. Really good ideas, really good ideas, guys. Um, the other thing that uh, is nice is the all steel drive line that comes with the kit. All steel internal gears on the transmission. The ring and pinion gear that comes stock with the kit are also of the nicer hardened steel design. And so you can see this is the stock ring gear that comes with it. It's machined just like the aftermarket gears that come on the SCX10 original one. Now you can actually compare the size difference between the ring and pinions here. Old style SCX10, new style SCX102. Along with it, the lockers. These are the lockers that we make, Torque Master lockers for the SCX10. And this is the stock locker for the SCX102. Much, much smaller. Now with that comes smaller bearings. So instead of having a 10 millimeter bearing seat, they have a seven millimeter bearing seat. And uh, we will see if that will cause any issues down the road, but that would be about the only place that would. Now, nice and scale overall, absolutely fabulous in that regard. And the fact that they did have the transmission swap out with the original SCX10. So if you don't like this big bulky transmission or you don't care about the two speed aspect in the future, you can swap it out and be used to what you're used to with the SCX10 transmission. There's a lot of companies that produce aftermarket for that transmission already. And so you'll have your known reliability and your known aftermarket support right then and there. Really good idea from Axial Racing. Now, what would be the cons of this rig is that I can see so far is mostly just this small ring and pinion setup. The smaller bearings are not going to take as much force and the smaller gear doesn't have as much room to disperse the load. However, they did a great job of increasing the surface area of the teeth. And if you look at them left to right, you can see that the teeth are pretty much as deep and as wide as the old style ring and pinion. So, that may not actually be a problem. That would be my only concern is that smaller bearing and the smaller ring and pinion. But I can't say it's going to be a problem because I haven't made it a problem myself. So just conjecture on my part. Uh, the larger transmission also puts the motor up higher. It's a little bit more weight in the system. That would be a con in my, uh, in my book. But again, since they supply you with a, a different skid plate so that you can switch out to the old transmission, it's hard to say that that's a con because they will let you get around it. So forward thinking from Axial, I really like to see that. Uh, well, that's really the only cons that we can see so far. We'll have to get some real time on this to know for sure beyond that. But what's the bottom line? It looks like an awesome new truck and I'm not going to hesitate to get one for the shop. I'm actually going to drive down to a hobby shop here in a little bit and pick one up. Uh, might have unknown issues, but we won't know until we try. So the bottom line is we give it uh, one thumb up while we almost get stung by a wasp and two thumbs up right now. We're going to go get one here in a little bit and look forward to putting it together. Thanks for tuning in. And if you have any more specific questions about the SCX-102, if you would like to see compared to certain vehicles or certain aspects of this vehicle, if you want more details, let us know in the comments and subscribe to us to see our next videos. Thanks for tuning in and have a good day.